Hi! Time to destroy your friends. Hey everyone, welcome to Room Board. My name is Chris George, and today is Strategy Sesh. Five tips to destroy your opponents in Rising Sun. Five or so tips. It's really more like 14. I got carried away. But we're gonna call it five. These are five tips that are sometimes a little small, sometimes big generalizations, but to help focus you if you find you're losing Rising Sun significantly. And if you're winning, tell me in the comments below if you do these sorts of things, because I do most of them. And when I don't, I lose. So obviously Rising Sun is a very highly interactive game, but these are some things that I think are good to focus on if you wanna give yourself a little bit of an edge over your opponents. Enough preamble, let's get started. Number five. <sighs> Number five, and this is more of a general strategy tip, is that this game is about wheeling and dealing and bribing. Always try to be convincing your opponent to be doing something that's in your best interest and not in their best interest. That may seem like an obvious thing, but like I kind of said in my review, if you've seen it, Rising Sun is a very interactive game and it rewards that sort of level of interactivity. Make your bribes realistic and make your offers realistic, but if you can help someone and they can help you in return, do that to every one of your opponents and you've got the leg up. I have in my notes, use your anger, feel your hate. And I can't remember for the life of me what that was to refer to. Oh yeah, point the finger. This will enable you to create those sorts of deals and say, hey, listen, you don't have to be worried about me. You gotta be worried about the Koi clan over there stocking up all those coins. You and I, we can work together and we can take Koi down. If you're taking someone else down, you're putting yourself up. Number four, don't underestimate Susanu. Susanu? Susanu? Susan from Accounting Oo. The Kami that gives you points based upon the number of strongholds you have. You're always gonna wanna get strongholds on the board, probably early, and I find if this Kami has been turned up, it's generally forgotten about, especially in the first two rounds. Because yeah, you can pick up one point, two points. It doesn't seem that significant until you add up those points over the course of the game. If you get Susanu, Susanu, whatever. If you get this Kami early enough, and you have two strongholds even, that's six points for the first round. Do that three times, that's 18 points. That's almost as much as you'll get for having five different provinces. These little points really add up over time. And this is my girlfriend Renee's tip, and she consistently beats me at this game, and it's because she doesn't overlook this Kami. Number three, realize that monsters aren't always your best choice. It's very fun to pick monsters when you have a train mandate. Yeah, it is. But if you're constantly picking monsters, you're overlooking a lot of other really powerful seasons cards. Cards that continually supply you with income. Cards that give you two coins and two points for every virtue you have. Way of the Bushido, that's so good. There are a bunch of strategies that I was completely oblivious to because I was tunneling in on must have cool monsters. And I was forgetting about all the other cards but really give those some weight and experiment next time you play on maybe not even buying a single monster, going all in on these sorts of strategies and seeing how it turns out. You'll have a much different game and it's pretty exciting. Number two, and this is a big one, is know your clan priorities. So I'm gonna go through all the different clans and give you what I think is an important tip if you're playing that clan. Koi clan, obviously, prioritize money. This is your strength. If you can prioritize money and get a lot of money income generated, you don't need anyone on the board. You need one or two people. But your focus is gonna be winning that higher Ronin battle advantage. That's it. And this can be incredibly strong. Just get things that give you money. The money kami, cards that give you money, winning harvests that give you money, anything. It's all good. And you can go into the war phase quite often with a stack of 10, 20 coins at your disposal. You'll be able to crush everyone. You are fierce warriors. Continuing on, the Lotus Clan. Remember when choosing your mandate that denying your opponents a particular type of mandate is equally as important to picking your own. Obviously as the Lotus Clan you'll probably want to marshal first because you're kind of stuck in your little Nagato area and that's why you're stuck there because you always have the flexibility to do what you want. But remember, think about what your opponents want and if you have that in your hand, bury it. And then lie and say you buried something else. Everyone will be counting on that other mandate to come up and you're the only one who knows the truth. Turtle Clan, ally with the Lotus Clan or anyone who you think might have a martial mandate. 
obviously as the turtle clan marshals are your priority because you want to get your sweet little turtles on the board however if you have an ally who has that as their priority then you can focus on making a decision that's even better for you if you're the dragonfly clan always be on the lookout for this perfect storm you have the lowest honor the oni of spite will be in play and you have the kami that moves people around and you're playing at a higher player count if those three things are there get ready for the time of your life because if you get the oni of spite and win that kami and are the lowest honor among five players every kami phase you're going to move that oni of spite to a chunk where all of the players are and steal two points from every single one of them which is a 16 point swing and then you're going to move them again to another little area and potentially get another 16 point swing if you can do this three times you win the game whenever i'm playing dragonfly clan i'm always hoping for this to happen it has happened very infrequently and hasn't really happened but i got it kind of once and oh man am i looking forward to doing it again try it out now remember not all fall seasons cards will carry the oni of spite so it depends on the set that you're playing but if it does Think about it. For the Bonsai Clan, your seasonal income is really low, so focus in the war phase on taking hostages. That's it. Then for summer and fall, you'll have a lot more coins to work with and your presence going into the war phase will be really formidable. Obviously prioritize whatever the bonuses at the end are gonna be as well because you can get them often for free if not one coin and they're worth a lot of points. For the Fox Clan, make sure to prioritize winning the best commies. Because of your ability, you're going to be involved in every battle no matter what. And you can lose a bunch of those battles, potentially killing yourself for points or using cards for points, that you don't really need to worry about your board presence. You should worry about gathering the additional resources on the side and taking those valuable commies away from other people. Sun Clan, obviously the priority is to keep top honor because that's where your ability comes into play. But also remember that the threat of a tie can sometimes be more effective than the actual tie itself. If your opponents are afraid that you're gonna tie them, they'll either bid more or bid nothing. And so use that to your advantage. And finally with the Moon Clan, just make sure you ally with someone who's gonna give you a martial phase. If Lotus is around the table, maybe try to ally with them because they need that marshal for their initial placement because if someone plays recruit before you're able to marshal you don't get to do anything and your incredible strength is potentially wasted keep your forces spread out so when recruit happens you're never stuck not being able to recruit players that's number two clan priorities and finally the number one tip to remember to destroy your opponents at rising sun is remember this although you may be in an alliance you're not in an alliance only one person wins the game there won't be ties. So use that alliance, chew it up, then spit it out. It's crazy how often people forget this simple fact. And they'll often consult with their alliance member to see what's the best move for the both of them. And sure, if that move is beneficial to you, great. And you're building goodwill with your partner, sure. But make sure that you are getting more out of that alliance than they are. If you ensure that, you're gonna be the one who comes out on top and they're gonna be working for you. When you bring honor back to Japan, they might get a seat at the table. Worry about rewarding them after the game. In this game, it's Rising Sun, it's cutthroat. It's not your fault, it's the way the gods want. Anyway, those are my five-ish, 14, 12, however many tips this actually is. Remember, it's just a game and don't take it too seriously, but take it incredibly seriously. And we take things seriously here. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if this is the type of videos that you enjoy watching or you think, ah, I can figure out the strategy on my own. Don't tell me what to do, which is valid as well. I tried to make these not too generic, but uh, if you have your own awesome strategy tip for Rising Sun, put it in the comments below as well. Until next time, my name's Chris George, you've been watching Room and Board, and I don't have a catchphrase, so uh, just go have fun, and subscribe, and like, and subscribe. Okay, bye!